I keep it out of the apartments if I can. Okay. Okay. We have in the town an individual that uh, is in the military, and the military requires him to go two weeks of active duty each year. Mm -hmm. And for the past six years, the individual has taken his five sick days and his five personal days and has used that as going for military duty. We've done some research uh, today because we knew this was coming up for discussion, and we find that a lot of the towns, uh, especially the state, for example, the state of an individual is active military duty uh, and is, has to go to his two weeks, the state pays that individual for going for his two weeks active duty, and they don't uh, make him so that he has to use his vacation time or his personal time. Can I, can I just ask you something? Because uh, it's informal. Do, but I thought a lot of them will pay the difference of what they get for national, you know, national guard or whatever army reserve the, the state versus really, what they. The state they just do. pays. Period. They the pay state. Up, they pay I mean, for 15. some of the towns. Uh, some of the towns, uh, Salem is. Uh, they pay for theirs also. It's mm -hmm. the same way with with the state. Okay. This individual, uh, an individual working for the town. Uh, on his pay sheets, as you can see, he's uh, supposed to be working a 40-hour week, and I think there's very, very few weeks that come in that he doesn't put in less than at least 50, 52 hours a week. And he's, if at the end of the year he ends up, uh, this individual has to, is sick or what have you, he has his vacation days to take over. But we would think that uh, we would like to support the officers that are uh, that are in uh, the military protecting us and all and give them the opportunity to be able to not lose a week's vacation or a, uh, uh, a week's pay. So does that person get paid for going to that duty? I'm not sure. I assume that the military pays him That's something right. for going. I'm not sure exactly so, what so it is. So they get what the town pays him and they get the military duty pays him. He is. Now, is, is that right for... I mean, not nobody here in town gets that. Well, you got to look at it this way here, that the policy that we've been going under has been in place for the past six years, and we've been he's been doing it right along. Is there a policy? Uh, I don't think there's a policy that says that uh, there's nothing. Matter of fact, there is no policy in the town that depicts on what's going to happen with an individual that's in the military, whether or not he's going to uh, get his two weeks uh, military leave paid by the town, or if he even is it called to active duty. And we, had, we went through that three years ago, and it was an absolute nightmare that the officer was, had all sorts of problems uh, with the town over the fact of whether he was going to get paid, whether he wasn't going to get paid. They had to turn in the pay slips, and uh, they sent letters to the family saying that he's going to lose his vacation time, and now he owes us time. It was an absolute nightmare. We're not town policy, excuse me. We do have a whole thing on military leave, and it says granted an unpaid military leave of absence. So based upon our policy, you get to leave, but it's unpaid. Okay. The this is as of June, again, I'm new here, June 2007 effective date. That's right. So, so but we, we do have somewhat of a policy. I'm not saying it's the correct well, that's, policy. That's a new policy. Uh, okay. uh, I'm not up to well, speed on it. Well, the accepted. The okay. policy was effective right. in 2007, and I don't think there was any change from the previous one. I mean, I, and maybe it's something that we take to the voters that says, you know, for people who work for the town who have military leave, is it something that we want to give them the difference between what they get paid and what their pay rate is? But it's something mm -hmm. the voters need to decide, not us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like Phil said, there were a few years back, there was a big discussion on that. There was a lot of discussion on it. it just never went anywhere. It just right, but I mean, everybody was embroiled. In the way the way it stands within the uh, for the full time and for the part time uh, in a, in our particular department is that they are basically told that you have X number of days of vacation time, you have five personal days, you have five sick days, you have eleven paid holidays. And you can use these days in any shape, manner, or form that you want. If someone decides that they want to work, uh, say, Memorial Day, they can work Memorial Day, get paid time and a half, and then they have another day off they so can take it any time they want. Are you saying that you don't use that town policy handbook? The you, town policy, you have your own policy? The town policy is that you get 11 paid holidays. And it doesn't depict that you will, it's mandated that you take well, them I, on I the day. I don't know if it says paid holidays so much as it gives you sick time and it gives you personal days. Yeah. 
Yeah, you get you get five hours. personal days, and those personal days you can use any time, any way, any shape, any manner. There's no restrictions on them at all. But but the sick days, you you, you yes. heard me read that. Do you disagree with that? Or? I, I, it's not so much that I disagree with them on that. It's the fact that. Uh, these were used for military leave, and if the town wants to come up with something uh, to compensate them so that the officer doesn't have to take a, take a week's vacation, in most places uh, th that I went through is that they stated that the officers will not have to lose benefits in order to do their military uh, leave, and if they have to take a week's vacation to do their military leave, so, that's losing So what benefit. you want is that person gets paid his salary also, he gets paid by the National Guard or the Army Reserve also, and then he keeps his, his personal time also. No, no, no. His so I mean, we're up to paying somebody for 56 weeks. No, no. His vacation time. It's five days. I mean, it's sick, big, sick time. It's I don't five think, days. I don't think somebody That's going by the should have to take his vacation. Right. He's got five sick days. Those are gone. Five personal days. You, you're going to pay him for those irregardless. Ten days a year, you're going to pay him. He's got those sick days coming, and he's got the uh, personal days coming. Okay. Once he takes those, there are no more sick days, and there are no more personal days. Well, well there is, Phil. That's the problem. It has happened in the past. Somebody takes those, and then you have an actual event, and then they expect it because they say, well, I'm, I'm not an not, exempt employee. Not in my department. My well, department, we, I keep a close record, and mine balance off with Sandra every month of how many sick days the individual has and how many personal days. And once those days are gone, if an officer was to put in personal day, Sandra picks right up on it. Well, Sandra, Sandra is a gatekeeper for it, whether it's police department or whatever department. And I, I rely on her, and I know what the maximum is. I, I guess I'm questioning definitely how can somebody be paid. You know, if, if that's the case, we all should join the service because we can be paid for the camp. We can be paid a salary. See, that's not the case. You're, you're, you're adding something in there that's not there. What's the officer gets paid a salary, so much each week. If that officer turns around and takes five personal days, he gets his salary, but they're, they're, instead of being listed as, as patrol work, they're listed as personal days. He gets nothing else at the end of the year or anywhere during the year. He's lost those personal days, so all he gets paid for, whether you put it down as patrol work or whether you put it down I, as I sick. Don't, Phil, I, I want to keep it out of that. I want to keep it to an employee, right. sick days, maximum days. What's the philosophy? I, I don't see this town as refusing somebody who's sick um, if they've already maximized their sick days. But if somebody's maximizing their sick days and it's March 1st already, then I just don't know if that's prudent. I mean. That's that's my feeling. I don't know what. I guess the understanding is the concern is if he uses his sick days, or someone uses their sick days, and all of a sudden they do get sick, then what? They use their vacation time. There's there's some of us that are on salary. For example, one person sitting here that's on salary for at least the past seven years. I've not taken a sick day personal day, vacation day, and it was six years. So that we're not definitely not abusing the system. The only reason this came up, this is strictly military duty that this particular individual is doing his civic duty and he's taking his, instead of taking his five personal days and taking his kids over to Canterbury Lake Park, he's using those five personal days to go do his military and, and, duty. And he took his five sick days. And his five sick days too. So now, if it comes up in July or August that the individual is sick, he still has his <coughs> vacation days in order to draft on. He generally doesn't use his vacation days until the end, and some of them are holding vacation days over like we're entitled to do. Well, if, if we're going to do that type of thing, I want it in the policy. If we don't, I don't want it. I don't want it utilized.